extra ranch, which is not normal. Um, I think a bull terrier will be more heavy bone. Bull terrier will have a longer reach of neck. So I don't think it's a bull terrier, but to put you out your agony is a bit. Okay. I'm going to do one or two more, and then you'll tell, tell you why I'm doing this. What is that? Staffy. Are you sure? Yeah. So you identify the staffy by what? It's fine. <laughs> For without seeing the head, you've identified by its body. Okay. So I have to cut more to make it a little bit difficult. Foxy. That's a fox there, yeah. Okay? So again, terrier breed, by the body, you identify it. There we go. Last one. It's oh, it's so you identify it by the body that you see. Okay. Now, somewhere in that old line, it's a bull terrier. <laughs> no, that's a nice so, one. So immediately, I don't have to show you a body, I show you a head. So you immediately say, ha, huh, that's a bull terrier. No. Now the question to everybody, does that make my breed a head breed? No. No. I would say no, it makes it a unique head, which means you will identify it anyway, but it still needs the support of the rest of the body to make a fierce bull terrier. But yes, a lot of people, that's why I say at the bottom there, it's got a very unique head. Some people call it a head breed. Yes. When they say head breed, I say yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's a very unique head. Now, the way that we're going to do today is I'm first going to chat to you through the body itself and the rest of the bull terrier, and I'm going to explain on the board and a little bit there, move over to movement, and then I want to explain to you this unique head a little bit more. Because it's, it's quite difficult when you read the standard. So there's a kind part. Okay. The bull terrier. And I think they said, I'm going to try to draw it, and end I try it, and it looks scrappy. So I took a little template and I put it down here. Okay. So the only thing I'm going to do right now, and I'm going to try to stand out of the way, or I can do it on the way. So the bull terrier itself. Okay. Maybe not the best specimen on the board. We'll come to that now. But the bull terrier itself is a very smooth dog, which means yes, it's the uh, it used to be called the gladiator. So it's not this fat blob that you see in the ring. It must be a smooth. When you see it, it fits its skins tightly. And the bull terrier is known for that little head over there, which is we call a slight curve over the head area. Not over, we will come to that. So I'm going to spend not a lot on the head now. Small head, little ears. Nice. Ooh, need some whiskey here. Um, <laughs> a long arched neck going into the body. Everything nice and smooth. So it's like running over the head, small little ears. Why small little ears? For instance, the dog used to be a fighting breed. So you can't have large ears, because the first thing that a dog will get hold of is the ears. Although we're not in fighting and stuff anymore, we still live to, there's a new thing in the standard that say, what its purpose was in the past. We still try to breed that and, and do the whole thing. But you'll see, it runs over the body, then over the back. Now a lot of people think when they look at a dog, they say, oh, the back. The back is only from there to about there. Mm -hmm. Just say that. Okay, I need this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Till about there. That's the back area. But we also call it... You also see a lot of bull terriers nowadays, it's what you call a level back. It means it's straight. Um, then it comes slightly, you'll see there's a slight roach. I can even draw it here. Bull terriers got a level, nicely arched neck, level back, and then slightly roach. That's over exaggerated now. And with a slight little roach over the loin area down to the tail. With the tail set on low. Which means the tail mustn't be up in the air. Set on low, younger dogs tend to run a little bit high with their tails, which is fine. But you'll see there, it's like it's flowing out of the dog. It first goes down a little bit, and then the tail carries on. And again, everything in balance. The length of the tail, size of head, rest of the dog, everything in balance with each other. If you go down then, legs-wise, the bull terrier that I've got on there, they say to me, thick set. There must be like a thick bone, a round bone. So if you look at that bully forehead size, I would sort of loved a little bit more bone, by the way. But in the end, it basically goes wait, sorry. It basically goes down and even this little hock area is for me a little bit high on the specific picture because it runs down, hock is high. Because in bull terrier world, when they used to fight, it's sort of using that stand part. When they used to fight, they had to stand on the back legs. Which means that the shorter the hock, the stronger the dog. Which means that when they stand and fight with each other, they physically stand and fight with each other. I think the statue almost the same, short hock. Ending in nice small little cat feet, not this big splayed feet or long toes. You will even see sometimes when you're judging, the toes are so long they start bending sideways in the ring. 
does any very nice little small cat feet. Small tucker, or a slight tucker under. So it's not a terrier terrier like a fox terrier with a massive tuck up to the stomach area. It's got a slight tuck up. It must be a strong dog. He must carry that hindquarters. <laughs> Sorry, that's the red. He's not a device. <laughs> Sorry. So slight. The other thing that bull terriers lack today, which I can talk about, is they lack chest. If you're a bull terrier nowadays, a bull terrier, if you think about even the, 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 the statics and stuff, a bull terrier is not made to stand like this. His legs, almost his chest level with his legs. He's made to stand on top of it, strong. Because the moment you, if you stand like this, you can't really move. Everything is stiff. But if you stand like this, ha, oh, lack of movement in front. Okay. So that's basically... Um, the head itself, okay, so again, the front feet also, not, it's straight pastons. When we talk about the paston for those people that's new here, we talk about that little piece over there. You get a lot of boot areas right at the bottom, where the upper portion of the feet is like almost bent forward. Now, when they're young and you see it, you can put that bowl up high, that you're almost forcing it when it drinks water or eat, to lift up a little feet. So you're almost training the feet into that. Position. Okay. Stay on, on their toes. Yes, stay a small little cat feet on the toes. The better they stand on their toes, for me the nicer the bull terrier. Okay? And when you look at the bull terrier from the front, both hind and front legs straight, not bent or bowed or anything, it must be straight. And the arms, that arm portion over there, must be well tucked under the bull terrier. He mustn't like a 4x4 hang between his legs, he must stand on top of his legs. So it's well tucked under the body. Okay. So that, if I had to draw, is almost a perfect bull terrier. Smooth lines, small ears, lack of reach of neck. One thing, what I also like about the bull terrier. Yeah, you can't wait for the other time. I 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 can't wait for the other time. You'll see what I like about that picture. It's smooth, yet muscled. It looks strong. You look at the, at the back legs there. There, you can see the muscle, the first and the second thighs. It makes a lack of muscle back, because that's, that's his driving with that back. Okay, so it must be strong. He's giving us a nice chest in front. He's giving us straight legs, standing on small cat feet. The hocks is, is okay. But I would love on this little one, by the way. He's just that tail set. If, if it could have down, gone down a little bit before it extend to the back. But for the rest, a very excellent, very nice dog. I don't like the underjaw. Oh, yeah, we'll no come to the head. Jaw. Skip the head for now. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> but on that one, I definitely agree with you. If you look at that head, dog shouldn't be lippy, number one. Yeah. Because a lot of time if a dog is too lippy, also you couldn't fight. We need teeth that come out. If a dog is too lippy, it hides the underjaw. But also you get weak underjaws that you can't see. The, deep must be, the head must be deep and strong. <coughs> okay. So we'll come to that and that's just now. You be the judge. I've just taken a picture, I made it black and say, I don't know who's going to this is, so I'm not going to step on anybody's toes, I think it's one of mine. That's <laughs> <laughs> out of the politics. <laughs> okay, if you look at that picture itself, okay, um, if you look at that picture, what would what your world think a little bit about? What, what, what do you like? Because when you judge a book here, I suggest you do the following. It's whenever you walk into the ring, the worst specimen you've ever seen, before you judge him, try to find two or three positive points about it. Got a pot belly. Yeah, make, make yourself turn positive before you judge the dog. So that you at least, and everybody has got this, like I said, even the worst specimen must spend this three minutes or two minutes, give him all his attention. Right. What? Would I look at that one? You go, Caroline, you said like a pot belly. Yeah. I think he's young, maybe, but yes, I totally agree. But he's not, uh, he doesn't have, let's say, that's his adult. He's there's, just not looking balanced. He's just not looking balanced. Box now look at, box box. yeah, look at that hox. Yeah. Yeah. Now, because that hox is high, yeah. look at the stifling where the muscle area should be. Yeah. There's nothing, it should be a lot more bent. There should be more room for the muscle. I'll show you a picture now. It must this make this nice bend. Peto. That's it, that's the one for a petto. Um, also the pastons in front, look what the pastons is doing. We call it pastons, but it's always the bottom part of the foot. It's bending a little bit like that. And I think that can be trained away because it's a young dog, by the way. Okay? Neck is too short. 
neck is too short. It's the almost, shoulders, shoulders, yeah. Yeah. And normally shoulders, when the neck is too short in future, shoulders. you'll see an upright shoulder. But I'll come to upright shoulders just now for the newcomers, what it is. Okay. Um, but basically, yes. Thank you. Another one. Oh, yeah. Hey, come on, it's my dogs, don't be nasty. <laughs> hey? Yes, okay. I don't know if it's going to be done. But it gives you an idea. Sorry, say it. So I'll give you a break. Okay, this dog, if you look at it, anything that I can see that's also wrong is. Um, the standards say there should be a slight roach over the loin area, not the whole back. So that one has got what I would call Afrikaans a bochelrug. Okay, that's just too much bending it. You get these dogs nowadays where the tail, when it runs down here, and they almost bend like that, and then the tail comes out here. And it's totally wrong because if you'll see when a guy walks and he stops his dog, his hind legs still run on for a little bit underneath the dog. Okay, it's just too much. Um, again, I would on that specific specimen would have seen balance, thicker bone, for instance. It looks very thin for me. Yeah, okay. it does. Um, also that neck. You can see there's definitely something wrong with the neck. Look at that chest. The chest is almost like a chicken little chest. It's not a deep chest coming out. Okay? So, you would have loved Hopefully a little... it's not a bitch. I mean, it's not, it's not a bitch, so it hasn't been bred from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, also the hocks. But also, if I, if I look at the, the ears, the ears is quite nice, I must say. Small erect ears, as the standards say, slight curve. Now, there I would have loved, keep stop. There I would have loved the boot area head, say, ending in a Roman finish, which means when the head comes down to the nose, which must be black, it bends a little bit down, like that. The lack is the place to kiss a boot area. Even in the rear. Okay? Um, kiss it there, it's like a, almost smooth and suddenly it's dipping at the end, okay? But that's basically it. Um, yeah, I don't think a worthy specimen to place at all. I would even have held the CC from it. I don't think it represents type. We'll come to type a little bit later when I summarize what you should be looking for. Sorry, I'm just mm -hmm. um, Very quickly, this is what I've tried to summarize. Okay, I've broken it down into the different areas of the dog, okay? And from top you will see, I hope you can read, ears, small and erect. Come, oh, look at the little ears, not big ears. I'll come to the ears now when we look at the head. When we look at the eyes, small triangular eyes. Now, the bull terrier has got a very unique feature in the whole of dogdom. Is it egg shaped head? No, no, it's not the only one with egg shaped head. There's an egg shaped head. In the triangular ears? Uh, okay, there you've hit the specific one. A lot of people think the obliquely set, which means the back of the eye should be higher than the front of the eye to make the triangle. Okay, so it's small triangular dip, well sunken, because when it was fighting, the children grabbed the eye. It's well sunken into it, and small, piercing. Um, so the thing that makes a bull terrier unique, and you can go read any standard, and maybe I'm wrong, prove me wrong, it's the only breed that says triangular eyes. Okay. And obliquely. Uh, no, obliquely is another one. So the net showed me, I also thought that. <laughs> There's two of them. <laughs> so I was wrong. I was arguing with my wife and then um, and I lost. <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> that's an excellent picture. Look at that reach of necks. And also when you look at the bull terrier from the front, my, the neck should come out of the head into the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Not this thin little terrier type. Mm -hmm. Must be strong. It's a gladiator. Okay, not a Mike Tyson. Because when the girls look at the gladiator, they must go, Whoa. Check that. Mm. But if you look at Baptiste and you think he's going to donor my boy, you don't think you're about being muscled and the whole thing. Same with the bull terrier. Okay. So that's all the different areas. Um, we've done the neck. We've done the, we call it layback of shoulder. Now we've spoke about it. Look at the small feet. Upright. Now this area here is called the four quarters. That area there, we just try to be nasty in bull terrier, so we call it a brisket. Mm. But it's a chest, so when you hear us next to the ring talking about a lady's brisket, you know what's the about. Um, but that there is the, is the brisket standing in front of the dog. That there is the four quarters. Now, when, when you look at the four quarters, the next picture we'll show you just now must be well laid back. And I'll come to that in the next picture with the bones. I just want to do quickly the bones. Um, you can go read at the muscle area there. It must be a level back, slightly right over the low area, set on low, 
hindquarters very strong, first and second thigh very visible, small little length set on low if it hocks, and a slight up tuck underneath. That's a bull terrier. Nice and smooth. Do you think that is a perfect thing? It's a nice picture. Yeah, that for me is a very nice picture. What about the pastures in front? Um, no, I'll show you now in real pictures. So no, but except for me. The pastures definitely in front there. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Okay, you see yeah. my pastures is a little bit down? It should be straight there. It should be more little cat feet standing. Yeah, he was almost yeah. like standing on his feet. And standing yeah. on the toes. Yeah. 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 So you see, that's a lot better. Hmm? Nee, nee. Bietje, hy staat so ook een bietje, hulle hou nie bietje larwe gehad het, daar is ook meer een bietje van een ronding gesit het. Ok? Maar, uh, dit is nie een hoopteil nie, hy kom wel, hy is semi-okai. Okay. I don't like this dog. Sorry? I don't like that dog. Okay. But it gives me the opportunity to explain to you all the different areas. That's all that's okay. Can I carry on and show you some nice ones? <laughs> Quickly the bones, you're asking about the physical why it's, ok. I'm not going to talk for all the bones, I'll tell you. Those people writing exams, I think have studied it a lot, and can tell me a lot. But in the end, um, look at this little angulation here. So, if the dog doesn't have a chest, then it's got no room for that little bone there to bend forward. But that doesn't make the bone shorter, which means that if there's no room for it, it's going to push back. It's going to become where it's supposed to be, like that. It's going to be a little bit more like that. Mm -hmm. The moment it pushes up, they push this area upwards. Okay? Which means that there's not the neck suddenly. It's not coming from the back like, like a long. You'll normally see upright in shoulder with the dog going, trying to look up to you. Because that bone's there. <coughs> there's no the room for it. So for me, I mean, I'm breeding. One of the biggest things in my life currently is breeding briskets. Chest in front, strong dog. Okay, then the rest of everything in the county. But that's very important. So that's how the bones fit together. Look at the back one, very important. That there we call the stifle. Okay? Now if you look at that, the tail coming out, jeez, but I'm shaking. Um, <laughs> if you come out there, the, the tail comes out on that side. I didn't eat breakfast, sorry, by the way. <laughs> Need a whiskey. Um, the tail comes out, and you'll see this one, but I like about a slight nudge over the loin area, the tail coming out there. Now, the problem is, let's say there was no room on the stifle there. There wasn't enough room, like at what I've shown you. We say, need some stifle, need some angulation. The same thing happens. It'll basically not allow that bones to make that angle and it'll push the bone inwards. By pushing it inwards, it will lift up the bone. Same thing. By, lift, by lifting up the bone, I'm almost there, by lifting up the bone, what will happen is that pelvis area, if it pushes up there, it will push up the pelvis at the back. What will happen to the tail? It's it's on high. Mm -hmm. So when you see a bull terrier running there, and his tail is like this, yeah. Look a little bit down, and normally you will find it in the stifle, not, much, uh, not enough stifle, or bent, or the whole tooth. Okay. Audrey? No, Audrey. Okay, sorry, I've got movement. I've just got a skip movement for now. Yeah, I'll do movement last, because I've just got a little video I want to show you quickly, and I'll discuss the videos in one minute. The head of a bull terrier. For me, unique breed. Okay? Now, when, when, when you look at the hair of a bull terrier, it's quite a few things. It is, number one, the distance, this for me is very important. The distance from the top of the head to eye must be shorter than from eye to the top of nose. Must have a long foreface. Okay? But by having a long foreface, we as breeders battling to give the strength in this area. Okay? So, and this is where we've got this, what we call, an internal little breed fight, versus the too much of a curved head, and I'll come to that now, versus the slight curve. Because with a slight curve, immediately you can bowl some strength. Now also you'll see the triangular eyes with the back of the eye obliquely set, it means the back is higher than the front. Small, dark, well-sunken, intelligent expression, all of those things, but must be egg-shaped. Now, egg-shaped, please people. If you look at the bull terrier and its standard tells you egg shape, that's not what they mean. My standard reads the following. It said egg shape when looking from the front. You're facing the dog head on. So they're talking about the width of the head. <coughs> not because then it tells you a slight curve on top. Okay. Now, a lot of people say they battle with big eyes currently. Okay. 
the round big eyes. Then they say, we've got to breathe it away. I say, no, you have to fix your head first. Because if it's too much curve, then you don't get bone here. By not getting bone here, look, okay, I'm going to look ugly now, but look what happens to me when I don't have bone here. Who could open my eyes? Round, big, large. Now you come to a bull which is got nicely filled in this area. The moment I start and say I've got a nice filter area, look at my eyes. So you by, by fixing your head, you're breathing small eyes. So large eyes, normally you look at it, then see, you will immediately start picking up too much curve, not too much full, or the whole tooth. Um, small erect ears, placed correctly on top of the head, not hanging on the sides, on top of the head. My standard, which is a lacquer part for me, and I always thought, why do people put in things like that? And it hit me one day. Flat between the ears. Why should it be flat between the ears? Yes, thank you. The reason for that is if my bull terrier has got a head between the ears like that, then the ears must be hanging on the side and it's larger to fit. But when it's flat between the ears, it can sit on top of the head. So, so flat between the ears, small erect ears, nicely filled area, long face, and ending in a black nose in front. From the side view, I'll show you just now, must also... I can go show now. Let's go for the next one. Right. Tell me about that head. Is it too much? I would say it's on average. So it's just my opinion, that's why we're talking about it. Well, then you must. Do, you actually must do this. Because he's doing this now, and it's looking more round. That's it. If you ask him to stand like that, it's not going to look the same. Okay. What I pick up here is also what I like. It's, mm -hmm. just like, it's a nice head. It's a strong head. Um, nice and deep. I see what's nice here. I see the underjaw very nicely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not lippy. Um, the head is deep and nice. The eyes are triangular. But the problem I'm facing currently, look at the position of the eye. Yes, yes the, the distance from top to eye is the same as from eye to leg. So it's sitting like in the middle of the head. And you, you will see a lot of them in the ring currently. Okay. So, and again, when I say in the ring currently, everything is just a fault. That might be the most perfect dog with that only little fault. And it could be the best dog ever in the world. Okay. So, when I talk that, yeah, but we're looking for a longer fall face. Out there, okay. <coughs> there's a longer four face. I like there's a longer four face. Yes, thank you. It's a longer four face. So the distance from there to there is longer than the distance from there to there. Nice and strong and deep. Look at the under jaw, nice and strong, that nice and strong, but Eyes grease and smooth. Because the standard also tells you the bull terrier head must be without indentations. Yeah. Nice and smooth mm -hmm. running down. So it's got a little dip there. But I would still love that head. I mean, come on, you can't have it. It's still a very nice, very powerful head for, for, for its own virtues and stuff. Any questions? Yes, please. Isn't it a deeper head I'm going to try to explain the English question. I don't understand. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's why I'm busy with Just switch over. I'm trying. Um, English is self defense, you know. <laughs> um, what she's asking is you get bull terriers where the little ears is nice on top of the head, but they get yeah, they get like what we call angle ears, they're bending slightly inwards. Um, as long as it's flat between this, till now I've never seen that as a fault. Yes, the standard say small and erect, but if it bends a little bit, if it's floppy, falling inside, I would say fault. But if it's slightly standing inwards and it's still flat between it, and very difficult. It's a nice expression, by the way, mm. when they does that. Um, so, bull terrier wise, for us it's almost perfect. Um, but judging that, you could say, ah, oh, the standards are erect. Okay. It's from an ancestor by the name of Archangel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the dog was called Archangel, yeah. So, um, <coughs> so yeah, there's a puppy again. When I look at that puppy, 
I will not take it for myself. Why not? Yes. Eyes. Eyes. Eyes being flat between the ears. Round. By being round between the ears, what does the ears do? It has got no space to sit on top of the head. It's falling to the side. So that's what we call it. We call it in our language 10 past 2 or 10 to 2 or 10 past 10 or whatever it is running like that. Is that a bull terrier? Really? I sold it. You know, that is yeah, no, that's a question. The question is that it's not even a bull terrier colour. It's a blue hey, come on, um, this is blue. I'll come to it now. Um, we come to color now. But if you look at that, that's just too much. I mean, if it was still halfway up, up the up the head, I would say maybe, maybe growing head, length of head, da, 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 da. maybe give me a perfect, nice, long head. Other virtues. But this one is just on the side. It's just too way down. Okay. The reason why I show you a puppy, not that you have to select the bull terrier, but it just shows you in the ring when you see this. Yes, and you can immediately start looking at the at the heads and suddenly realize and say, yeah. Um, very nice head. The only reason why I put it up is I would take that home any day, by the way. Um, the distance between the eyes, the direct ears, strong, not lippy. Okay? And then nowadays you see that in the ring, and you believe it or not, people think it's beautiful. We've got a lot of breeders breeding for that now. Yeah. But not even it's, it's like the new fashion state. Like the new fashion yeah, statement right. if you breed the heads like that. Yeah. Currently in both areas. Nice. Now when you've got a head like that, you lose strength here. It can't be strong here and a head like that. So you have to balance it off. Okay. But look at that eye even. It's even skewing. It's too much. It's skewing it. The nose is not black. Yeah, the nose is not. Very nicely. Thank you. And even the nose, because the standards say the nose should be black. So how do you balance that out? Uh, how do you get that? You can eat or eat. Uh, uh, um, you, breed, you breed similar looking dogs to similar looking dogs and there's certain <laughs> lines, there's certain That's lines, cool. giving that as a dominant feature now. And then you start, yeah, so. It's, the same it's like how they decorate the bull terrier over here. So you just start breeding something that looks like a bull terrier. The same year. People have overdone it now and it's, it's like if every second dog you see nowadays in the street, they say, look at the head. They're running past the rest of my dog. Look at the head. Mm. Quick question about mm. the nose, but if you look at your top UK dogs, mm. they all got pink noses. They all bred from white dogs. Can I just <coughs> look in here quickly? You've got two types of faults on a dog. Superficial faults and structural faults. That little bit of pink on the nose will not make that dog not be a gladiator and a fighter. Mm. With that nose he can still win the fight. But if he hasn't got stifles and strong hindquarters, deep jaws, he cannot win the fight. So I'd rather go for a dog like that and put him up yeah. than go for a dog with no hindquarters yes. at all. But when you're breeding, please try to get the pigment as strong yeah, as yeah, possible. Yeah. Because That's people think... Pigment for it. Yes. You <coughs> breed with that completely... Keep yes. on breeding with that. You, you're, you're, losing, you're losing... You're losing... You're losing... You're losing... You're losing... That's it. And it comes to liver colors and everything and you start losing... That's where skin problems come about. Sorry, my opinion. That's a personal opinion. That's a nice answer. I like that. That's a really nice answer. Alright. That's cool. Is the... 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 Like a fault on the dog, or that depending how much. If you it's permissible. Yes. Okay. If it's I say not, it's not. Uh, There's a lot of judges. They will tell you how yeah. it does. Yeah. Is there? But that's totally it's white nose. It's definitely it's a fault. But it's just a nice fault. I'm throwing this comment on the pigment thing. As long as the dog's also got pigment, if you open the mouth, but it's got black pigment. That indicates that the dog's got strong pigment for breeding. But they're showing. Remember, you're presenting. You're presenting a judge. You yeah. can't ask a judge to open the mouth yeah. of the pigment. But for breeding for yourself, that's it. Okay. Now that dog there, yeah, the reason why I show you, it's got excellent head, nice and deep, the distances, everything. That's the most winning dog in the world ever, by the way, with a white nose. It's called Dazzling Defiance. Okay? So with its white nose, that's what I was coming to. Even with that white nose, with all the other features he carried, he was still the best, and still is. Today in the UK, like all the lines you will see in South Africa, which got this dog somewhere. So there he is on the front. So yes, he's got a little bit of a pink nose, 
But look at that small eyes. Look at the distance from the eyes to the nose. Look at the head ears. Look at the flatness between the ears. Look here. And it doesn't 